Today, we're gonna talk about a four house mega deal with a giant profit and how you can do the same thing. So today, real excited because yesterday, we just closed a four package deal. And I love doing these you know, deal critiques because it's real stuff, right? It's not theory, it's not practice. This just happened yesterday, right? We, we, we made the wire yesterday and we actually got a wire back uh, this morning in some way. So I'll tell you more about that, but this is like, it happens in real time, right? This isn't theory. It's not stuff that works 10 years ago. The market's not any different. We're making money today. And that's the one thing that I'm really proud about this podcast, because I talk about sales and negotiation and lead generation, because that's what it's all about. And if you do what we talk about on this show, you're going to make money. I promise you it's, this show is so fulfilling. I make way more money in my real estate business than I do from coaching, but I love the emails that I get or the reviews on iTunes that say, Todd, oh, I listened to what you said and I doubled my profits or I got this deal or I created more time. And so this stuff is real. So today we're gonna talk about real deal. So let's talk about the four package deal. So uh, we uh, get a little notification in our, uh, by email every time someone locks up a deal. So we use Podio. I don't care which CRM you use. There are a bunch out there and I'll recommend some, but the reason why we use Podio is because we've been in it for years and we just haven't changed, right? And I don't necessarily fi find a reason to change unless there's some huge, giant, compelling reason at this time. So anyway, we get an email and says, boom, we locked up another house, a little button, right? And every time we hit it, we get to hit it, boom, um, sell this house. And so we get the email and I see it's a four package house. Now it's really interesting because one of the houses is vacant and three of them are occupied, but have one year leases. Now something is a little off here because the day we signed the contract, the seller signed the leases two days beforehand. So we're thinking, okay, did the seller like, you know, want the tenants to stay there, you know, and just sign the lease? And I think, I think that was what was going on. Right. But anyway, we looked at the houses and I see that we got them for a phenomenal, phenomenal price, all four of these. So we get it and we've got a property manager involved. And all of a sudden I see on the lease, okay, uh, no pets allowed in the lease. And then when we go inspect the properties yesterday, we actually see one tenant has two pit bulls. Another one has a cat. Uh, one of them is vacant and uh, one of them is really, really clean. looks like a real solid tenant. And what we want to do is we want to turn around these properties. Here's the great part though. These properties have about uh, $50,000 in profit each combined, right? So about $200,000 in profit, one deal, four package deal, one seller. Here's the crazy part. Okay, this deal was from a cold call that we called uh, 18 months ago, 18 months ago. Seller did not sound motivated, right? Guy's an investor, owns four houses, has other businesses, you know, other real estate, just didn't seem like, you know, he had any compelling reason to sell. And some people, when they're de dealing with a sophisticated seller, you know, they just move on. But our team continued to follow up and follow up and follow up and follow up. And our lead manager said, hey, you know what? This guy wants to sell today. He said he'll sell us all four for a great price. Acquisition manager got on the phone, locked them all up. He actually had to drive an hour and a half each way. He met him halfway. But the guy was willing to drive an hour and a half to us, and we drove an hour and a half to him. That told us he was motivated. Very, very important. If a seller is willing to drive an hour and a half to meet you, now you know you have a motivated seller. Long story short, we got the deal under contract and we closed yesterday. So here's how we structured it. One of them is vacant. The other three, we're not going to be able to sell for the kind of price that we want because they're occupied. So we wholesale the, uh, the uh, uh, by the way, the seller says we had to buy all four on the same day, but he didn't say they had to be in the same transaction. So the vacant one, we just assigned to a cash buyer for top dollar for as much as we could get. We liked the price. We felt good about it. House needed a lot of work. We couldn't sell it to a retail buyer. You know, there was some fire damage in it. And we just said, hey, let's just move on from this one. And that one's going to be about $36,000. And boom, we're going to um, we're gonna make that on that property. And now we only have three. So on the day we closed, we made $36,000. And then we had to fund the other three. So what did we do for the other three? Well, for me, I actually funded these three 
from uh, my own cash. And then I actually had a private investor fund part of it also and gave him a great rate of return, 10%. I could have done my own cash, but I didn't want to type that much just in case these leases go for a year, right? Very, very important. Now, all these people are paying rent. So we're going to be collecting rent during this time. After we close though, we decided, or we, we, we see, excuse me, we see that they have pets and they're violating the lease. So immediately we're going to go in and we are going to try to negotiate to give them cash for keys for at least two out of the three. So we're going to offer all three cash for keys to uh, move out. Hopefully all three will take the cash for keys and walk away from the lease. If not, two out of the three are breaking the lease. So we'll then bring that up and say, hey, listen, you're breaking the, the, the lease right now. You can't have pets. We're still going to offer you cash for keys. They're going to play nice that way and really give them every opportunity. If they want to get rid of the pets and stay for the term of the lease, we'll have to allow that. If they want to move out and take the cash for the keys, they'll also, maybe, maybe they'll take that at that point. But knowing that at the end of 11 months that they're going to have to move out anyway, I can tell you that most tenants will come to the realization, hey, I might as well move right now, especially if I'm going to get cash for keys. So here's the issue. So two out of the three will probably be able to get vacant uh, in the next 30 or 60 days and make about $50,000 after cost on each one of those. So 50 and 50. And then we've got the last ones in great condition, great tenants. If they don't take that, well, worst case scenario is I can refinance into a long-term rental loan and keep the property if I want, right? Remember, I am collecting rent on all three of these properties. For me, it's not necessarily ideal, but I can turn that into a long-term rental. As of today, knock on wood, values are still going up. So at the end of a year, hopefully I'll be able to sell that property for more and maybe make more than $200,000. Here's the interesting part though, is that most investors passed on this deal because these tenants had a year lease, right? Three out of four of them at least, and they're almost a full year. And most of them were below market value and they didn't have that long-term view, right? They're always trying to make that fast buck, fast buck, fast buck. And most flippers don't want to buy stuff like they're only looking at the short game. For us, we're thinking, okay, we could buy it. There's still enough upside. If we can negotiate cash for keys, hey, this is a good deal. But if, if we can't, get out of these deals? Can we hold on to these for a year? Can we refinance out? Can we get our money back? And the answer is yes. And if that happens, we might even make even more money. Not only because property values may go up. Yes, they could go, go down. Right now they're betting they're, they're going up, um, at least today. And uh, then we could actually sell at long-term capital gains instead of short-term capital gains. Right, so instead of the regular IRS rate of let's say 37 or 38 percent, uh, now you're looking at between 10 and 20 percent. So you actually make, you know, an extra ten thousand dollars on the deal just by the tax treatment. So we really, really enjoyed that deal. I know today was a quick, snackable episode, but the lesson is number one is don't assume that because of a seller is sophisticated that you can't do a deal, right? This guy owns a lot of houses, owns several businesses, didn't sound motivated, but we stuck with it, called and said, hey, let's do a deal if you can close in the next 21 days. Number two, don't be scared of the hard deals, right? We saw the problem, saw the leases, other investors passed this deal up. Find a way to make it work in the short term or the long term. A lot of things I talk about is play the long game and the short game, right? It's okay to make money quick. We actually assigned one deal, but we kept three to make more money. It might take us 90, 120 days to get this all wrapped up, but hey, still a win-win. Number three, have private funding sources ready. Do that work now. Hopefully over time, you'll start to build up your own cash, but if not, you can have partners, you can have private lenders, you have your, your rich uncle or your rich aunt or a friend, whatever. People love making seven, eight, nine, 10% of their money, right? They love that stuff. Go and do them a favor, right? They're not doing you a favor. You are helping them by not using their money. Okay. You're depriving them of monthly income. Think about it that way. Okay. The next thing that I'm going to tell you is just go out and generate leads, right? Go out and generate leads, make it happen, have the long-term view. And then finally is do not forget about the tax treatment. All right. Is you are going to save a lot of money by the way that you sell things. If you sell, sell it immediately, you're going to pay full time or full tax on it. If you keep it longer than a year, 
you actually are going to make more than you think by the tax that you will save. Of course, talk to your CPA. Everything I said could be completely wrong there, <laughs> but talk to your CPA. And that's what at least what mine tells me and uh, how my tax return reads. So I hope you enjoyed today's show. If you have a story that you want to share on the podcast a great deal, go ahead and reach out to support at nolimitsrealestateinvesting.com. Love to hear about your story or your deal or what's working your business and have you as a guest on the podcast, if you're willing to contribute. Also head on over to nolimitsrealestateinvesting.com forward slash script. And there is a gift from me to you this is the exact script that we use to lock up these four deals <laughs> and the script that we've used to lock up over 1,300 deals in our company. And hopefully it's the script that you're going to use to lock up your next deal. So head on over to nolimitsrealestateinvesting.com forward slash script, and I will talk to you on the next episode.